Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. Come along with me on this fishing trip as I show you how I catch bluegill. All right, guys, gonna give you the uh, 411 on what I'm doing here. Basically, it's just got a little lightweight spinning outfit. Got some 20-pound uh, braid on there, and they ask why I use braid, especially on these smaller ones, and why do I use such heavy line? Uh, one, it's easier to tie a knot with a little bit heavier line. Uh, you can go with a lot thinner stuff. I just go with something a little bit heavier. Uh, also, you can feel bites, especially when I'm fishing for perch, things like that. You can really feel a bite good on this stuff, so that's why I go with that. And it casts like a dream. This stuff is uh, Power Pro Super Slick, and uh, it's in the brown backcountry. I had this on here a couple of years, and uh, you can tell the color's kind of faded. Still working fine. Need to get another spool of it. And uh, just a little Fluger reel. Uh, you know, I don't know what they call that. A, maybe a 3000 series, 2500, 4000, something like that. Small stuff. What I've got is a uh, double uni knot that ties on a piece of mono. I've actually got my bobber in the way of it right here. Get out of the way. We got a little double uni knot on there. You probably see. Gives me a piece of mono on here. I think it's probably 12 pounds, just a little bit of clear line. And also, in case I break it off, uh, I got a little small hook on it uh, so I can break it off, retie real easy. But just a little gold hook. Normally, I use a circle hook, but I'm out of them. So that's why I got these on there. Now, it's just got a little bobber on here. You can use any kind. I've just got one that clips on. Stays right there in place. Sorry about the airplane. We're right next to the airport. Then, what I'm doing here on the business end on this hook is I've got me a little tub of red worms. I love red worms. You can use about anything you want to. Night crawlers are fine but they're a little bit big. You know, I just try to thread these on there as much as possible. So that sucker is all the way up the hook. The reason I do this is so that less likely to snatch it all off of there so it's almost sticking out like a little jig little hook exposed on that end we're good to go to catch some fish I've got a uh, trolling motor up in front of the boat I control it by this right here and uh, I'm not one of those guys that likes to stand up there with a foot pedal like the bass fishing guys I uh, usually stay back here on the back of the boat most of the time Reason being, my live wheel's right back here over my shoulder so I can pitch fish into it very easily. So that's why I fish back here. Doesn't really matter which end you fish off of. Sometimes you, if you got a boat that you can cast off of, you're better off being on the front, but it really doesn't matter. Now you guys that bank fish are trying to catch rim, pay attention to what I'm doing because uh, if you'll notice, I'm fishing right up on the bank. Uh, water right now, we're in uh, mid-May and uh, Water 74 degrees, so a lot of these rim and bluegill uh, have uh, pulled up on the banks and uh, they're either spawning or staging to spawn. I think right now at the time we're at in the month, we're probably still pre-spawn. Uh, kind of the old, uh, the old timers way of saying it is the first full moon in May is when they spawn. So. Uh, yeah, that's probably usually pretty close to being the optimal temperature for spawning. So, usually those old-timer rules of thumb are pretty accurate. So, uh, we'll see if we can get on some fish here. Just got to figure out where they're sitting at, how deep they are. I notice my bait fell down a little bit. What you have to do with these clip-on bobbers is sometimes double wrap it around there so it doesn't slide. A little bit closer than I want to be. So one of the things you got to keep in mind, guys, is you can spook fish. You can spook them. Boom, got one right there. He's right up underneath that tree. Little warmouth. Get him off of there. Boom. A little bitty warmouth. He's a small one. Pretty fish. Good coloration to him. Another one that's in the sunfish family. Uh, whenever we refer to brim. We're pretty much talking about any of those small sunfish. Uh, not the large sunfish, like the largemouth bass, which is actually what a largemouth bass is. Spotted bass, all of those are uh, they're actually in the sunfish family. But uh, boom, oh, I thought I had another one biting. It's just a matter of figuring out. I like to cast around these little trees like you see right here. 
but a lot of times you get different little creatures that are on those limbs, especially the caterpillars. If you look up there, it looks like there's a caterpillar nest, and uh, those uh, caterpillars will uh, go to crawling around and falling in the water, and especially when the wind blows, and a lot of these fish like to sit right up underneath those limbs and pop them when they hit the water. So that's a good place to start anytime you got any kind of cover, and obviously anytime you get any kind of limbs or anything else in there. Boom, got him. Got him. Boo. Annie reverse about going there. Old bass boat flying out behind me. Small little brim. Great catfish bait. That's what we're looking for. That's what I catch them for. You can catch them to eat. Um, Sometimes to get on some of the bigger eating size bluegill and brim, uh, you're better off really fishing during the spawn. That's when you get some of the bigger ones. This lake is loaded with small ones, and I mean loaded. So uh, these things are relatively easy to catch and find. The bigger eater size, a little bit tougher. You really gotta work for them, and fishing for them during the spawn is a good time to do that. Boom. Look what's in here. Wow. That's little. That. That's why that line is barely moving. I still use him for bait. I don't discriminate. That one actually hit it halfway decent. No monster, but a keeper. Picking them off little by little. Sometimes that's what it takes. You just have to find a place where the bigger fish are, boom. And that right, ow, it popped off. But usually when you find them, it's one cast right after another. All right, I'm gonna mess around these trees a little bit. I'm a little bit far off the bank right here to be catching them, but we're gonna work our way up and around. When I'm brim fishing, I don't let bait sit to where it sit anywhere too long. You can, if it's the only place you got to cast, fine. But if they're there, you're gonna catch them quick. Generally speaking, if you don't get hit in the first 20 seconds, you need to recast, reposition your baits. That one hit fairly quick. Yep, there he is. Get out of the tree. Get out of the tree. There he is. They're not monsters. They're bigger than what I had. happened is I caught two in there boom pretty quickly so I'm gonna play around in that area I know where it's at I'm gonna hit a couple more places right around here see if they're here Bam, got him. there's some fish around these trees the other thing I noticed when I pulled out here ooh, there may be just a little bit of current just a little bit Got him right up on the bank. Man, the big ones are elusive. I think I'm gonna have to go into the back of a cove or something to get to them. Sometimes that's where they're at. Sometimes they not. Pop, there's another one. Maybe we found a magic combo right here. Two fish back to back makes me excited. If you can catch them in the uh, there's a boat wake, you're really doing good. They seem to not bite for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. I guess they don't like all the rocking and rolling going on. That might be one right there eating. Yeah, I bought this one and popped him. Things are not biting aggressive. I gotta remember too, I've got a J hook on here. I'm used to fishing with a circle hook. A lot of times I'll fish, that's a better fish, uh, with a uh, number eight Gamagatsu circle hook. Uh, yes, a circle hook for these suckers. Why? Well, when they get it in their mouth, there's no setting the hook. 
they set it. So it's a good hook to use. But I'm out. So oh boy, just forgot how to set the hook. That might be my problem. That could be my problem. These little soft, soft bites that's going on. I just might need to pop them. Boom. Got him that time. There's one. Oh, that's a good one. Ooh, that's a good one. It's a better one. Ooh. He'll be one of the first ones to get a knife. So here's my tips. One, use red worms. Uh, I found they work pretty much anywhere. I love red worms. You can use crickets. Uh, you can use some of the other grubs and local stuff. Whatever. Uh, I like red worms. They're usually readily available. Uh, and you can grow them at home. I say grow them at home. All you need is a wet pile of leaves and something to cover them up with. A place to keep them damp. Uh, you ain't got to pay to get them. So, second piece of advice. Uh, water gets above 70, start working the banks, especially uh, from about May on. Uh, it's usually when you find those fish right up on the bank. And if you're working the bank, be very cautious of being seen and busted by the fish. A lot of times these fish or just a few feet off the bank. So uh, watch your silhouette, uh, especially if you think fish are dead in front of you. Uh, you may want to go this way or that way and cast over to them so you're not spooking them. Uh, if you're in an area that's open, very open, you don't have any trees behind you, definitely watch your silhouette. And what I mean by that is, uh, you gotta remember those fish are looking up at you from the water. And so they're seeing, they got a big white sky there. And then all of a sudden they see this black blob come in. Well, guess what? Their uh, instinct tells them to get the heck out because that's something generally that's coming to eat them. So, uh, so yeah, watch your silhouette when you're fishing along these banks. Light line, small hooks, um, and vary the depth too. You know, I've been playing with this cork all day here, uh, just moving around how deep it's sitting in the water column. And uh, it's, uh, you know, sometimes these fish are right on the top. Um, or sometimes they'll come up to the top to hit. Uh, sometimes you got to drop it into their face. So uh, that's another thing. Another thing about catching bluegill, to be honest with you, once it starts to get dark, it's kind of hard to catch them. Uh, I don't know what happens with them. You can still catch them. You'll still stumble into them. But these are almost, uh, I call them the turkeys of the uh, woods or the uh, lakes. They, it's just hard to catch them at night. Uh, you can, uh, but that's your bluegill that you're going to catch. You're going to catch during daylight hours. And, uh, you know, low light, uh, they seem to like. Uh, they also seem to like shade pretty good, especially once the sun gets up, everything's lit up. That's where you're really going to have to start finding shade pockets. So another tip, uh, work those overhanging limbs if you can, uh, and trees that have bugs, caterpillars, that kind of thing. Uh, as some of these, uh, depending on what part of the country you're in, there's different little things that hatch up out of the water. We call them mayflies here. They usually come around in June. Don't know why they're not called June flies, but uh, those things cover these tree limbs. And uh, they'll hatch usually at night. They come up out of the water column, come to the top, fly up onto these limbs. Very short life. They only live, I think, 24, 48 hours. Mate, larva goes back into the water goes down it's usually bad bad fishing uh, during that time period uh, but uh, it's a good time to catch brim and bluegill because these things will land up on limbs you can go hit one of those limbs those things will fall into the water if the wind blows and uh, <clears throat> the fish sit under there and feed on them so another little thing to keep in mind just some little tips um, again if you're not catching them another important tip keep moving uh, I know that can be tough when you're bank fishing because uh, bank fishing you're kind of pinned in place and I understand that. Uh, but if you have the option of moving, moving up and down the bank, try some different stuff. Try some different shoreline. Uh, one of the things is, you know, some of this stuff here I'm on, it's kind of a bluff. It's, it's pretty steep. Depending on what's going on in the time of the year, fish may not orient to that unless there's some trees or structure along it. Uh, you know, as they start to spawn, these fish are going to be on sloping banks. Uh, 
you know, gently sloping banks. Typically dark sloping banks. For whatever reason, uh, they like, like that dark bottom when it comes to spawning. So, you know, it's things like that. Pay attention to what's going on uh, when you're fishing, uh, and especially when you're catching. Pay as much attention to what's going on as far as what you're fishing when you're not catching them as you are when you are catching them, because uh, that'll give you some clues on stuff to stay away from. Boom, got him. It's actually pulling the boat up here to another place. Popped one, baby. Popped one. 